Our biggest challenge uh, when talking with a patient about uh, requiring concurrent chemotherapy and radiation is trying to discuss with, the, with them that while cure is possible, it's certainly less likely since they ca cannot undergo surgery, um, as well as just trying to get them through chemotherapy and radiation because of the side effects of concurrent treatment. So most patients have some type of side effect with concurrent chemotherapy and radiation. Fatigue is the biggest side effect that I tell patients to uh, watch out for and be concerned about. Certainly, particularly fatigue is cumulative as time goes by while they're doing concurrent chemotherapy and radiation therapy. You can see a drop in blood count, so making you more prone to develop fevers or um, in other infections, um, as well as giving chemotherapy and radiation together is, increases the chance of um, esophagitis or pain with swallowing. And it can get to the point for some patients, about a third of them, where they have a tough time uh, eating when they're doing, uh, particularly towards the end of give, giving chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Those patients who come in uh, either with a lot of weight loss to begin with or um, are elderly, sometimes we'll discuss giving uh, sequential chemotherapy followed by radiation therapy or vice, ver vice versa, radiation therapy followed by chemotherapy. But in, in order to get the best chance of control, giving chemotherapy together with radiation is probably the best. Certainly, we'll decide about what type of chemotherapy to give to patients depending on how well they're feeling. Giving once weekly paclitaxel and carboplatin, at least in my clinic, seems to be better uh, tolerated by patients who are elderly or have some other comorbidities compared to cisplatin and etoposide where we tend to use that in younger patients who can tolerate uh, the cisplatinum.